An adequate intake for vitamin K for adults 19 years and older for women is 90 micrograms per day and for men it's 120 micrograms per day. But is this range 90 to 120 micrograms per day for vitamin K optimal for health? So with that in mind, I'm going to present data for a paper that was just published uh, earlier this month that looked at the association for vitamin K intake with uh, risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease related hospitalization. Now, uh, as a quick note, note this, uh, this was a relatively large study that had more than 53,000 subjects that had a median age of 56 years and that had a 21 year follow up. Now, note that vitamin K consists of two main isoforms, vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. So with that in mind, are vitamins K1 and or K2 associated with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, ASCVD, related hospitalization risk? So uh, that's what we're looking at here in, uh, as a first start. So we're looking at the hazard ratio for the total amount of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease related hospitalizations on the y-axis plotted against the vitamin K1 intake on the x-axis. Now, note that when the uh, shaded regions are completely below the black line, the hazard ratio of one, or completely above the black line, that indicates a statistically significant effect. And what we can see is that for uh, people who ate uh, up to 280 micrograms of vitamin K1 per day, we see about a 30% decreased risk for the total presence of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease-related disease hospitalizations. Now, conversely, people who ate less than 50 micrograms per day of vitamin K1 had a significantly increased risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease-related disease hospitalizations. Now, uh, note that these models were adjusted for factors that can impact these associations, including age, sex, uh, BMI, smoking status, income, physical activity, alcohol intake, and education. Now, also note that uh, the total atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease amount can be subdivided into uh, ischemic stroke, ischemic heart disease, and peripheral artery disease, which essentially is uh, our measures of atherosclerosis in arteries that go to the brain, so ischemic stroke, ischemic heart disease, which is coronary artery atherosclerosis, so the plaque buildup and narrowing of arteries that supply the heart, which limits uh, blood and oxygen supply, thereby leading to cell death, and peripheral artery disease, which is atherosclerosis in arteries that go to the limb, so arms and legs. And similarly, uh, we can see that for people who ate uh, relatively higher amounts of vitamin K1, 280 micrograms per day, there was a significantly decreased risk for atherosclerosis in arteries that go to the brain, heart, and limbs uh, for each of these measures. Now also, uh, we can also see that for pe people who ate relatively lower amounts of vitamin K1, less than 50 micrograms per day, they had an increased risk for uh, hospitalizations related to atherosclerosis uh, for arteries that go to the brain, heart, or limbs. So from that, we can conclude that uh, 280 micrograms per day of vitamin K1 uh, uh, may be optimal for decreasing risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease-related hospitalization. All right, so one about, what about uh, vitamin K2? So uh, here we're looking at the same uh, measures, uh, hazard ratio for total atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease on the y-axis plotted against the vitamin K uh, intake, vitamin K2 intake on the x-axis. And uh, first, note for the total amount of atherosclerotic cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease-related hospitalizations and ischemic heart disease-related hospitalizations, we can see that uh, a K K2 intakes in the 60 to around 70, 75 range are associated with mas maximally decreased hospitalization risk. Uh, ischemic stroke is in a similar ballpark, not 60 to 75, but somewhere in the 70 to 85 micrograms per day of vitamin K2 is associated with reduced risk of hospitalizations related to ischemic stroke. However, per, for peripheral artery disease, note that the shaded region overlaps at all parts of, of the graph, so vitamin K2 intake is not significantly associated with peripheral artery disease hospitalization risk. Now also note that relatively lower intake, so closer to zero, and higher than uh, about 100 micrograms of vitamin K K2 per day were not significantly associated with hospitalization for any of these atheros atherosclerosis-related hospitalizations. So from these data, we can conclude that somewhere in the 60 to 80 micrograms per day uh, for vitamin K K2 range uh, may be optimal for decrease decreasing risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease-related hospitalizations. Um, so based on the data that I've just presented in, in this paper, uh, this suggests that the 90 to 120 micrograms per day recommendation that I mentioned on the first slide 
uh, as an adequate intake for vitamin K may be too low, especially when considering that 280, 8, 8, 280 micrograms of vitamin K1 and somewhere in the 60 to 80 range for vitamin K2, that's about 350 micrograms of vitamin K per day in terms of reducing risk for uh, hospitalizations related to atherosclerosis. So uh, that suggests that that adequate intake of 90 to 120 grams may be too low for reducing this hospitalization, atherosclerosis-related hospitalization risk. Now, last but not least, what I haven't shown yet is which food sources provided vitamins K1 and K2 in this study. So that's what's shown here. And for vitamin K1, the primary sources in this study uh, were margarine and lettuce, and then relatively smaller amounts of vitamin K1 were derived from broccoli, whole wheat bread, and spinach intake. Now, it's important to note that margarine and whole wheat bread are relatively poor sources of vitamin K1, as shown in this small chart here. And conversely, spinach is the all-star of the foods that are on this list, with more than 2,000 micrograms of vitamin K1 per 100 calories. So just taking in 15 grams or half an ounce a day of spinach, one can reach that 300 microgram or, or 280 micrograms of vitamin K1 that was associated with maximally reduced risk of hospitalization related to atherosclerosis. Now, so for vitamin K2, um, we can see that um, uh, four of the vitamin K2 isoforms, so menaquinones, MK, uh, so MK4, MK8, and 9, uh, um, accounted for about 85 or 86 percent of the total vitamin K2 intake, which was derived from eggs, butter, cheese, including hard and soft cheeses, uh, the soft cheeses including brie and blue cheese. Now, in terms of their vitamin K2, uh, vitamin K2 content per 100 calories, and note that most um, studies reported on a per gram basis, but I like to report it on a per calorie basis because if you eat based on grams, one can be fooled into thinking they're not eating a lot of calories because they may not be eating a lot of grams. So uh, I count everything by calories, so that's why I normalize the uh, microgram of K2 data and K1 data per calorie. So what we can see on that list is that egg yolk, the foods that... Um, uh, accounted for most of the K2 intake, egg yolk, blue cheese, brie cheese, and butter contain relatively low amounts of vitamin K2, less than 20 micrograms per 100 calories. And although the people in this study didn't eat these foods, other more rich sources of vitamin K2 include a hard cheddar cheese, 70 micrograms per 100 calories, cottage cheese, 4% cottage cheese, 4% fat, 52 micrograms per 100 calories, uh, and full fat Greek, Greek yogurt. Uh, which has uh, 28 uh, micrograms of vitamin K2 per 100 calories. And I'll put the links to the studies that have that data for vitamin K2 in the video's description. All right, that's all I've got for now. Uh, if you made it to the end, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, have a great day.